In this video, I want to share with you how you can become a better public speaker, not just on a stage, on a Zoom, but also on social media. If you don't know me, my name is Fraser Brooks, and I travel all over the world helping people just like you build a business using social media on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and all the different platforms. And now today, I really hope that I'm able to help and serve you. So a little bit of background about my personal development journey. So I got started in personal development as soon as I was born. In fact, I often say that I was in the room, in the womb of my mom at their very first presentation. And when my mom and dad got involved into personal development, I also did. In fact, my first ever role inside the space of personal development was I had to make a note of the speakers. So when I was seven years old, my dad gave me a piece of paper and a crayon, and he said, Fraser, I want you to write the first name of the speaker and give them a score out of 10. You decide the score, you just have to just write the score. So I would go, John, three. Sarah, seven. Eric, four. Whatever, whatever the scores were. And my dad would go, thanks. Then as the years progressed, I had to write the full name and a score. Then I had to write the full name, a score, what it was about. Then I had to write full name, the score, what it was about, and the reason why. And after studying two, three, four, five thousand people that I'd been to all these events over my entire life, I started to establish what made a good public talk. Now, externally, I was like, wow, 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 this is amazing. What a great idea. Be able to speak and share stories and inspire other people. But internally, I had the fear of public speaking. And it was interesting, just like flying, the more flights I go on, the least I like flying. You would think the more flights you go on, the more comfortable you get. But every time I go flying, I feel a bump. And I'm like, what's that? Then I feel a different bump. What's that? Then I hear a different sound. What's that? Just like watching speakers, I see them make a little mistake. I see them slip up and I start thinking, what if that happened to me? So I had the fear of rejection, the fear of failure, but also the fear of public speaking. I was not liking that idea. So when I was 18 years old, my dad introduced me to an online business and I said, no, no flipping way because I knew he was gonna get me to speak on stage at some point. Now these are in the days when the online world wasn't really that big. So it was kind of, a, kind of the Facebook Live idea was, was not a thing, so it was all speaking online. But when I was 22, I'd had enough. In fact, I had my enough is enough moment. Maybe you've had that. You're sick and tired of being sick and tired. You're sick and tired of not having enough money at the end of the month. So I made a decision to get involved. I was 22 years old. And I said to my dad, I said, dad, totally up for doing this. As long as you promise me you're not gonna get me on the stage. He said, oh yeah, it's all good, it's all good, it's all good. So, big day comes. We've got about 400 people going to this event in crew in the Northwest of the UK. We're super excited, everyone's buzzing for it. I've got a load of my friends coming down in the car, and I've got a convoy of cars going from Liverpool all the way down to Crew. A two hour drive, something like that. And we're driving in the car, I was in the passenger seat, my dad was driving, I said, Dad, you haven't got any plans to like surprise me and get me on stage, have you? He said, no, 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 no. So the first half of the event goes, everything's going great. Lunch break goes, everyone loves the lunch break. Everyone's having fun. Just after the lunch break, my dad goes, and the next speaker is one of my favorites because he lives in my own house, upstairs, Fraser Brooks. And I'm like, my dad's where you are. I look immediately to the exit door. I make a quick dash, but he put two of the biggest guys in the room on the door. They shake their head at me like, no, 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 no. You ain't coming here. And I have to decide to walk down the middle of the room. It felt like a bowling lane and people with the barriers just pushing me from side to side. I get just about to go onto the stage. All I'm thinking is my head is nothing. There is nothing going on. For the first time in my life, I am blank. My dad gives me the microphone. I hold the microphone at the very, very bottom. He walks off the stage, and all you could see is the microphone doing this. This is all you could say. People are on the edge of their seats going, what's he gonna say, because he looks petrified. And I burst into tears. Didn't even say my name. Didn't even say, uh, I just burst into tears. I was 22 years old. Half the room was laughing internally. The other half of the room was like crying for me or upset for me, sad for me, because they'd known me since I was a kid. My mates at the back of the room are going, oh, this is a disaster. My dad comes back on, he gives, gets the microphone back from me, kind of t walks me off the stage and he says, well, that didn't go as well as I expected. And ever since that moment, and we're driving the way home, the event had finished. It was a great event, not for me, but for everyone else. We're driving on the way home, silence in the car. Uh, he probably thought I wanted to murder him. I had thoughts of what was going on. I can't believe he did that to me. His fault, his fault, his fault. 
We parked the car at home. We're just about to leave the car to go to the house. And my dad turns to me and he says something so powerful, which was so simple. It might not be powerful for you, but for me, it was so simple. He said, you're never going to let that happen again, are you? And that was it. I still feel the emotion now. You're never going to let that happen again, are you? And I said, no. And he told me the story that when he first got introduced to the stage, his mentor did the exact same thing to him. He never told me that story. I guess he was keeping it so he could pass it on to someone else. Because sometimes getting thrown in the deep end is actually the most important thing that will happen because you learn how to swim real fast, right? And obviously there's a support mechanism there. My dad was a support just in case I couldn't swim. He was my armband. He was my lifeline. So I walk back into the house and I make the decision. I'm never going to let that happen again. And I'm going to turn my biggest weakness into my biggest asset. And now, through some of the tips I'm going to share with you, now I've been paid to speak in 35 countries around the world. My passports are completely full. I've had a bunch of them. And I've been paid. I've traveled to countries like Russia, Kazakhstan, Australia, parts of the US, Canada, all over the UK, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, Finland, Luxembourg. I'm missing so many of them. But I've traveled all over the world. I've seen the world. And I've seen the different people in these parts of the world. So here's how I did it. Okay, so tip number one is preparation, right? As more you prepare, the less nerves you will actually feel. Now, you'll, you'll still get nerves, right? My dad used to say that we all get butterflies, but preparation allows the butterflies to fly behind each other in the same direction, right? It's only when they overlap and hit one another that you feel that, that sick feeling. So you've got to prepare. So how I used to prepare is I literally would write out the entire thing. So if I needed to, I would take the piece of paper out of my pocket and read it. Look at best man speeches. Best man speeches are simply stories. Stories from best friend to best friend. If they were in a private conversation, they would have no problem. But as soon as they've had, and they've had a few drinks, they get up because it's their time to speak. Almost all best man speeches have a piece of paper, side and back, where they've written their script out because the nerves just overtake that. So number one, Prepare. Now, the second level of preparation, still on tip one, the second level of preparation is then reduce your script down to bullet points. And then the third part is remembering your bullet points so you don't need a piece of paper. It's totally fine to take some notes or a piece of paper onto stage with you, as long as you maybe potentially have it on a card that looks nice, or you have a prompter that looks good. Number two, Start with telling your story so that you can master the mindset. One of the most biggest fears that everyone has is the fear of judgment. So I don't know if you did like any oral exams in school where you had to get in front of your class and you had to share on a topic that you like or you had to discuss what you liked about a certain book. But so many people get petrified because they think, I'm not an expert in this topic. So what, are the, what am I going to get judged for? What's the teacher going to think? What's my best friend going to think? What's all the, the bullies going to think? What are all the other people in the class going to think? So start, this is the hack, real simple. Start with your story. Whatever you're going to do, just do a five minute story, 10 minute story, 15 minute story, 20 minute story, 30 minute story. Why? Because no one knows your story like you. No one. Think about it. When Hollywood decides to do a movie about a famous person or a, a, a controversial person, guess what? The actor, if they're good, they will go and meet the person if they're still alive. Study them. What are their mannerisms? Some of the best actors in the world, like Daniel Day-Lewis, for example, they will go into a deep, I think it's called method, method acting. They will go into a deep, deep state of analyzing every single trait of the character so that they can mimic that person. So it believes like, wow, Daniel Day-Lewis was incredible in Lincoln. Why? He studied all the material that was available to him. Not just because he looked the part, because he studied it. So if number one is preparing, number two is sharing your own story to master your mindset. All right, so number three is using your voice correctly. Now this might seem like an advanced technique, but here's the last thing you want to do. And you'll probably start this way, is, hello, my name is Fraser Brooks, and today I want to talk to you about how to become a better speaker. And I'm really excited about this because because you're so focused on what you're saying that you forget to actually speak like a normal person. So maybe you're going to go up, maybe you're going to go low, maybe you're going to go back, maybe you're going to go forward. Maybe you're going to use silly characters like... Nah, 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 nah. It's totally fine because the moment that you start changing your voice is actually the moment that you become more confident. And confidence is the key when you're on stage. Point number four is body language. Don't speak 
with your hands crossed and never speak with your hands in the pockets. In fact, hands in your pockets when speaking is a sign of you being bored. That's what the studies say, that when the speaker has their hands in their pockets or their arms crossed, they're either defensive or they're bored. Or they've got one arm like this. Never ever do this. Imagine if I was to speak to you like this. You're going to be defensive. Imagine if I was to speak to you like this. You're going to be defensive. So be open. If you're going to talk about step one, two, three, share with your fingers. If you're going to share that how I went from here to here, use your arms. Now again, it, you want to exaggerate. Right? If you were having a conversation in a pub, you might not go, so I was watching the football in the first half, we went from defence to offence and we scored a goal. I've never used the word defence and offence in football before, so basketball, we went from defence to offence. Right? You use your body, you exaggerate. Why? Because that creates energy, but it also creates engagement. All right, and number five is getting engagement from your audience. If you say who agrees, don't just say who agrees. You would go, who agrees? Right? You can even make fun of it. Like if one or two people, you say, who agrees? Oh, you two agree. Great. Right? Call them out because as soon as you start doing that and you make a point of people not putting their hands up, again, you, you don't say, why are you not putting your hands up? You would say, hey, me too. I agree with you guys. Right? You're my people. Right? The more engagement you get, the more engagement you get. Right? The more times you get asked for the engagement, the more you'll get. You'll see if I speak on stage, I'll probably do this about 20 times right? in different ways. I'll get people to shout out. But I would never get them to shout out in the first second. I would do it towards the end or through the, throughout the middle because I've already proven this audience is ready to engage back to me. Because engagement is going to feed your energy. You'll feel it. You'll feel the comedians. When you get someone to laugh, straight away you feel at ease. If you can get someone to laugh in the first few moments or you can get someone to raise their hand in the first few moments, you will feel at ease. But if you walk onto the stage, you stand right in the middle of the stage, you look down at your notes, you've got your arms crossed and you start speaking like... Blah, 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 blah. After about 30 seconds, everyone in the room goes, I cannot wait for this person to leave the stage. Now, no one's going to throw rotten tomatoes at you, right? That's in the olden days. Like, they're going to get off. They're not going to do that. But internally, they're thinking they wish they could. Now, those are just five real basic tips. And these work online and offline, when you're on a stage or whether you're on a live, like a live online stage. But here's what I would recommend you do. Here's my challenge for you. Go out there on social media and start telling your story every single day. If you want, do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Share a little bit of a different part of your story, like think about how you met your partner previous relationships, what you do when it comes to health and wellness, what supplements do you take, what's your favorite movie, what's your favorite book, what podcast do you listen to? So many different ideas. Why do you like dogs more than cats? Why do you like pizza more than pasta? Why do you think there are more doors in the world than there are more wheels in the world? Whatever. You give your perspective, you share your stories. That's all you got to do, right? Now, once you've done it for 30 days, go do it again. Oh, I'm repeating the content. What you repeat, you remember, and what you remember gets repeated. So when you repeat, 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 you remember it without needing bullet points. It's written in your brain so that you can just repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat. Oh, but what about my audience? This is not a challenge for your audience. This is a challenge for you. Because the moment that you get so fluent with telling your story, you get so fluent with your content, is the moment people see you as confident and is the moment that they want to drag, they want to hold onto your, your coattails and go where you're going. Confidence and conviction and certainty. Success leaves clues. They're all words beginning with C, right? Confidence, conviction, and certainty is what's going to get you more sales. It's going to get you more speaking gigs. It's going to get you asked to speak on stage more. It's going to give you more influence. It's going to build your brand stronger. It's going to build the business that you're building even more because becoming a powerful speaker is the route to big influence, whether it's online or offline. So with that being said, if you've got value, please do me a massive favor. Smash the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up and let me know down below if you're going to take the challenge or not. See you next time. Bye-bye.